department originally went out and asked for some uh, bids for uh, to add SCADA, supervisory control and data acquisition for our 37 lift stations that we have about the city. This system allows us to uh, continually monitor all of the stations, it allows us to know exactly what the level is in the web well, uh, the quantity that that station is pumped for that day, and uh, whether or not there's any faults or pending faults. One pending fault, one thing that this also gives us notice of is if we start to have uh, poor performance in the pumping systems, so that would be indicated if one pump, for instance, com for instance, comes on and runs five minutes, and the next pump comes on and runs <coughs> ten minutes, that's going to generate a work order uh, for an unusual run time, so the technicians will know they need to get out there. Pump two may be uh, starting to see some effects of wear, so they can go out and make those adjustments. That's just one one uh, one critical element of the that this data can be used to provide us advance notice of. <coughs> also, while this was out, we asked the vendors to give us an alternate bid for including all of the wastewater treatment plants and the water treatment plant into the SCADA system as well. We were planning on bringing those stations on uh, in phases. Uh, next year, we were going to ask for additional uh, SCADA equipment for the wastewater plants and the following year for the water treatment plant. Uh, one of the vendors came back with a price of only uh, 40,000 additional dollars to incorporate all of the treatment plants into the SCADA system. He feels that uh, while he is here, he can save the city over $150,000 in cost uh, from uh, having to remobilize and redesign the architecture for uh, for the network required for all of these stations to communicate with each other. Uh, having received that, uh, we ask that that be considered as option one uh, at $292,459. And there's a couple of slides in here that show uh, some of the technology that we're going to be putting in these stations. Um, we should be able to monitor all the stations if there's, when it starts to receive excess flow, we should be able to immediately see that we have an increased flow in the <coughs> stations. And the stations can talk to each other. So if one station becomes, uh, becomes overloaded, then another station can, can take over for that station. Uh, the redundancy also allows for all of the treatment facilities and the lift station servers to back each other up. So if we have a failure at one of the wastewater plants, the uh, plant itself should know that there's been a uh, failure of the state system. Uh, the lift station server or the water plant server will just, uh, in a matter of milliseconds, pick up and continue to make decisions and, uh, and operate the station uh, as efficiently as it can. So uh, we think this is going to be a great addition to the things that we've already done utility and uh, add to uh, us having the ability to uh, react quickly when there are uh, changes or we need to make a correction. And there's a question for you. Any questions? Uh, uh, they're going to be connected by, uh, by, te by technology. What, what somebody get to a treatment plant? Could be, could be, would be monitoring? Yes, sir. Is that, is that right? Yes, sir. Uh, all of the stations will be talking to each other, all the lift stations, all the treatment plants. And, and you know, somebody, somebody at the, at the uh, treatment plant will, will, will be looking at that 24 hours a day. Okay. Now, you, you mentioned, it seemed like to me you mentioned something concerning uh, the water, but this is not connected to the guest road uh, facility, is it? It's not right like now, but it will be. Okay. Yeah, all the all the all the uh, all the treatment facilities and all the other stations will all have access to each other's information to make decisions. And some of those decisions may be if the water plant sees an animal out of something abnormal happening, because it does provide wastewater to the some of the lift stations, like the one at Goodyear, right across the street, right down the road from the plant. Yeah. So if that station becomes overloaded just by uh, just by wastewater coming into it, it can tell the water plant to hold back on sending the, uh, the waste product down until that station catches up. So also, uh, we're going to use the lift station. There's already water supplies at the lift stations. So all of our water pressure indicators are going to be uh, scattered around the 
city at these 37 lift stations. So uh, the water plant will have access to that data also to know what the water pressures are throughout the city. So if there's a fire or something else happens there. And, and, the, the, and, and the same thing, a kind of uh, storm, storm water getting into the system yeah. that, that we might can nail down with what's this area that was storm water is getting into. Yeah, so we got a lot of, uh, we treat a lot of rainwater that are tremendous cost when it should even be in the system here. Yeah, this is going to be uh, probably the most important, the most, most uh, vital asset that we've added to our arsenal of detecting where that water is coming from because we are going to have years and years and years of historical data so we know exactly what this station does on a normal day. And if it's rainfall of one inch, two inch, three inch, all that data is stored. So when we start to have something happen, if this station starts to take on Water, uh, we'll know immediately because it's going to change the pumping characteristics of that station. It's going to alert us. So we'll know, for instance, that station five, uh, after a two inch rain runs three times longer than it normally runs, we know to go to that collection system, where all everything grabbed into the station five and find that problem. How much is that addition water? Uh, Stone wells. How, how many millions of gallons? That you think that uh, you all think that stormwater got in, into our system now as we do this last? Yeah, uh, Well, I'll tell you what, that, uh, with the Coochie, we typically pump about 3.5 million gallons a day. A day. Okay. Uh, we were pumping in excess, in excess of 30 million gallons a day. So 90% of the water that was coming into that station was stormwater uh, for the last three days. So. Uh, we, we estimate we probably got an extra 60 million gallons of water into the, uh, into the sewer system. What's so bad about that when you pay the tree when the, 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 yeah. that's the bad part? The chemicals, the electricity, you know, the uh, wear and tear on the equipment. We pumped, uh, we pumped more uh, and well, we received more rainfall in three days than we typically treat in a year. We typically treat about 1.2 billion gallons of water with the uh, Just doing some basic calculations and uh, using National Weather Service. We got over 5.7 billion gallons of water just in the city. The uh, corporate limits of the city of those, of those uh, 36 hours. You know, we don't have any, I don't remember uh, hearing, uh, hearing, hearing anything about our other plant out of the old state of old about water getting into that. Remember, we must not have that much. Well, and that was part of the, the big force man project that corrected a lot of that problem that we had out there. Uh, we got about 8 million gallons of water in there. Typical, typical day we get 2.5, 3. So it, uh, you know, it doubled, you know, but nowhere near the capacity uh, of inflow that we got and was the Gucci. Yeah, it held up well. I uh, didn't have any significant issues out there. We had a roof, some flooding some, some <coughs> in the building from the roof, uh, a roofing issue. But as far as the equipment, and as far as that goes, really the lift stations also, they performed, uh, they did what they were supposed to do. For the lift stations, uh, none of them malfunctioned. Uh, and some of them had one, two, three pumps running at a time just to keep up. And a couple of stations were literally underwater, so you know all that water is sitting on top of that station. Uh, we had four feet of water um, some, um, sitting on top of some of the stations at Goodyear. Uh, out by Night Street, we had two and a half, three feet of water on top of the station, so all of that water uh, you know, went in the station, got front to either Whisper Coochie or Mother Creek. Uh, so but the improvements that we've made, the money that we've spent, we finished the final round of rehab for the lift stations this year, and uh, all of them, all of them, all of them, are not a single building. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Uh, can I have a motion on this item? Then? And please <coughs> state the option that you are uh, making a motion on. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion that we go with option three for the $292,459 amount, which will cover all of our operating plants and systems in the state. Second. All right, we have a motion and 
second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed by saying sign. I was just sitting here thinking that I'm completing my seventh years as mayor. That's uh, 84 months, and that's uh, 100, approximately 160 uh, meetings. And I think that if that every meeting would have been here, we approve something to improve our water and sewer system.